السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وقال تعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون صدق الله العظيم all praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector and curer. May the choicest of his blessings and salutations be upon our beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. My dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, O slaves of Allah, it is indeed incumbent upon all of us to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the numerous bounties and favors He has conferred upon us. For indeed we are wallowing in an ocean of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are wallowing in an ocean of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from these numerous blessings comes about the beautiful bond of nikah. The ayah that I recited in the beginning, we aren't supposed to flick through the pages of the Qur'an or flick through the verses of the Noble Qur'an without pondering and reflecting upon those verses. Allah the Almighty, our beloved Maker, He says in the Noble Qur'an, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Look at the words, Allahu Akbar. Allah the Almighty, He does not say, Afala yasma'oon al-Qur'an? Do you all not hear the Qur'an? Afala yaqra'oon al-Qur'an? Do you all not recite the Qur'an? Nay, rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Afala yatadabbaroon al-Qur'an? Do you all not reflect and ponder on the Qur'an? The word tadabbur, to reflect, Ponder on the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah goes on. Oh, have you all got locks on your heart? Have your all hearts hardened? That you all cannot reflect on the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, Pondering on the verse that I decided in the beginning, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا And from his signs, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs are that He has created for you all مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا Mates, spouses, for what reason? لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا so that you all may find peace, tranquility, happiness by them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say, لِتَسْكُنُوا مَعَهَا So that you all may find happiness, tranquility, peace, solace with them. No, rather, إِلَيْهَا When you go to them, when you are with them, all of this comes under the usage of the word ilah here. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it is from his signs that he has created this bond. For it is true, if our powerful maker had wished, he could have created us in such a manner like amoeba, 
like some bacteria, like some organisms to reproduce by ourselves. We would have no need towards a mate. We would have no need towards a spouse. But through his infinite wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in such a fashion, in such a manner that we are in need towards a spouse. We are in need towards a mate to exist in this world. So it is from the mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is from the blessings of, from, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from all of these blessings, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, it is the norm. It is the norm that we see that the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are accompanied with trials. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us through afflictions, calamities, to polish us to the better and likewise to test us. So with marriage, what is the test? Before I go into that, I said that blessings are often accompanied with tests. Blessings are often disguised as trials. At the outset, it may look as a trial for us, it may look as a calamity for us, it may look as an affliction for us. But on the long run, we do not know what is happening behind the scenes. Allah the Almighty, our Creator, He knows what is best for us. He knows what is happening behind the scenes and it turns out to be a blessing. Look at the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and his beloved wife Sarah alayhi salatu wasalam. They are crossing Misr. They are crossing Misr. Whilst they were crossing Misr, Misr was ruled by a dictator at that time, an oppressive king, a king who was a pervert, a king who had an extraordinary sexual fetish. He used to lust behind the women of other men. The, the, the bodyguards, the security of this king used to stop people, caravans at the border of Misr, or known as today's Egypt, and they used to check the caravan. If there, are, if there were women, they used to ask the men as to who those women were. If the men used to say that they are our sisters, or they are our mothers, or they are our daughters, they used to allow the caravan to proceed. But just in case one of them replied saying, no, this woman is my wife, then the security, the, the forces, the king's forces used to take the women to the king's palace for the king. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and Sarah alayhi salatu wasalam crossing the border now. The forces of the king stop them at the border, check them, and they ask Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam as to who, the story goes along the lines of these words, as to who Sarah alayhi salatu wasalam was. He replies, he replies as she being his sister. He intended, he intended, there is an interpretation to that statement, he intended that she was his sister in Islam to avoid the greater harm. Because he knew if he replies that she is my wife, they are going to take her to the king's palace. So he replies as her being to his sister and he intended that she is her sister in Islam. But now, Sarah والسلام, was an extremely beautiful woman. She was an extremely beautiful woman. Scholars of Tafasir mention. So this, the forces observed this, the forces of the king, and they thought no. Our king has to have a look at this woman, even if she be this man's sister. So they take her and head towards the palace. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, the Khalil of Allah, the friend of Allah, he immediately turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and raises his hands in prayer. Ya Allah. He prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The king's forces take the women, take Sarah alayhi salatu wasalam to the palace. The king, the minute he saw Sarah alayhi salatu wasalam, he was enthralled by her beauty and immediately outstretched his hand to touch her. I told you he was a pervert, he was a dictator, an oppressor. He outstretched his hand to touch her. She too immediately turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Long story cut short, he tried it thrice, thrice she prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his hand went paralyzed and fell to his side. Each time he said, pray to your God and relieve me of my situation. Finally, after the third attempt, he knew that he could not harm her in any way. 
he calls his forces and says, Why have you brought a witch to my coat? Why have you brought a witch to my coat? And then he says, Don't do this ever. He blasts them and he gifts Sarah alayha salatu wasalam, Hajar alayha salatu wasalam. He gives Sarah alayha salatu wasalam, Hajar alayha salatu wasalam, and tells her, Please be on your way. Please be on your way. The point I'm trying to highlight here, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, at the outset of it, how did it look? It looked a calamity. It looked an affliction. It looked a trial. Allahu Akbar, your wife is being taken, captured by the king. It looked a trial. But Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and his beloved wife Sarah alayhi salatu wasalam passed the test with flying colors. They passed the test with flying colors resulting, now look at the blessing, resulting in Hajar alayhi salatu wasalam being gifted to Sarah alayhi salatu wasalam, resulting in a bond between Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and Hajar alayhi salatu wasalam, resulting in the best of mankind coming to the face of this earth, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And please remember salawat whenever I mention his name. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came through the, the lineage of the bond between Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam and Hajar alayhi salatu wa salam. So my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, a calamity, an affliction, it looks as if it is a trial in the beginning, but eventually turns out to be a Immense blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. So now that I've highlighted that, marriage, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, comes with its trials, comes with its afflictions. Remember that the bond of nikah, our bonds of nikah, are not like the kuffar say, till death do us part. They have the ring, inscribed in the ring, till death do us part. Our marriages have been sealed off in the heavens. The matchmaker is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our bonds are supposed to last for an eternity. They start in this world and traverse on to the eternal akhirah, the eternal hereafter, and they go on forever and ever. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, for a marriage to travel on to the next world, to stay intact in this world, it is upon us, the two spouses, to work on their relationships. You can't expect a marriage to be concreted. You can't expect a marriage to be reinforced. You can't expect a marriage to be strengthened if you do not work on your relationships. I do not wish to scare the groom today, but problems are inevitable. Problems are inevitable. They come like the waves in the ocean. It is all about, ba you know, life is all about problems. But it is about battling and surfing through these problems, breaking through these problems. So my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, the few minutes that I have, I just wish to share a few tips that would help enhance an individual's relationship, in other words, a marriage. Number one, levels of positivity. Levels of positivity. This is of extreme importance in a relationship. The reason being, let me give you an example. A man, he works, he toils from morning to evening. He goes to office perhaps, or he's in a business, he heads to his shop, or whatever it may be. He toils from morning to evening. Now he's heading home in the evening tired. I'm talking about positivity levels. I'm po talking about positivity wives and negativity wives. Not wives, wives. So he comes home tired in the evening. He comes home tired in the evening. What is he expecting? All of us, we men, as we open the door, as we open the door at home, we expect our wives to welcome us with a warm, happy smile. We expect our wives to welcome us with a warm, happy smile. Positivity wives. The vibrations, the positive vibrations affect one another. Say if she is happy and she welcomes you happily, you are also going to be happy. No matter whatever the tension you may be facing, so many checks may have bounced. You may have been blasted by your boss perhaps at work. You come home tired, but the minute you see the smile on your wife's face or the smile on your children's faces, 
all of those tensions melt away, you leave all of that outside the door and you enter home happily. But on the other hand, let's look at it in its negative form. Say he enters home, she welcomes him with a frown. What took you so long? Why are you so late? What would be the result? All of that stress, all of that tension is just going to burst. One tiny issue, perhaps he would just come in, he would say, I have a headache, I don't want to talk to you. You know the traffic on the roads, you know I had to catch the train, I had to wait for the bus. He would go straight in. Say there was just a little salt left in the curry for dinner, that would be blown out of proportion. He would look at the children, why are you looking so happy? Haven't you got any homework to do? The father would be screaming at the children, fighting with the wife. The reason being, positivity wipes. Psychologists say that it is extremely important that the, that the wives are maintained in a relationship. And how much is it going to cost for a smile, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam? A smile is considered a sadaqah in our deen. It is not going to cost us a million dollars to show us to show some teeth. So just as how we expect our wives to welcome us warmly with a smile, etc., we need to portray the same image by being kind to them, by smiling at them, and all of that. So number one, levels of positivity. Number two, just another three points. Number two, reassurance of love. See, we men, we want respect. At the end of the day, we want respect. But women, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, are very emotional creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are logical creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say an argument crops up, a tiny problem. We men, we want to lay everything on the table. All of the logical evidences that we can place, we want to lay it on the table and sort it out then and there. We say, let's talk it out. Let's sort it out. This is how men work. But women, on the other hand, she will be crying. You won't even know why she's crying. Why are you crying? I don't know. Why are you crying? I don't know. She just wants some space. Women are created as such by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, they need to be reassured of the love of their husband. Now we men might think, from morning to evening, I'm toiling, I'm earning, I buy the groceries, I do the marketing, I pay for the school fees, the school tuition, all of this are basically manifestations of my love. Why do I have to come every single day in the evening and say, darling, I love you? Is that really necessary? We think, we think like that. But women, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, they do not look at your earning, they do not look at your toiling, they do not look at how much food you bring home, or the tuition, or whatever you're paying for. At the end of the day, those three magical words, I love you, carry a long way. So they need to be reassured in regard to their love, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam. Having said that, the third point is that nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. We are all full of flaws, full of mistakes. Just as how we have so much of mistakes, so do our spouses. But it is a matter of not criticizing one another, even if you see, arguments are inevitable, but it is upon us to fight fair. It is upon us to fight fair and not criticize one another. And instead of resorting to divorce, resort to the word sorry. Many of us find it difficult to resort to the word sorry if we are not found at fault. Number one, because it is of our own ego. It is because of our own pride. And these are detested things in Islam. We are not supposed to have pride. We're not supposed to give in to our egos. So rather, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, a much better resort is to resort to the word sorry and wrap things up. As finally, the principle is that nobody is perfect. And the last point, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, is to be a gentleman in a relationship. To be a gentleman. At the very beginning of a marriage, mashallah, there is no man like him. He's so well dressed up, he's got perfume, he's so smart for his wife, he's so loving, all of these things. After a few months, 
He does not want to look smart for his wife anymore. There is no more acts where to prove his, him being a gentleman. Look at this, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam. At the end of the day, we benchmark everything to our master, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We take it from his life. Because at the end of the day, he was the best husband. He was the best teacher. He was the best role model. And if we adopt his life as our lives, we attain success in this world and the hereafter. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was by a camel. You know how tall the camel is, what a tall animal it is. One of his wives, if I'm not mistaken, it was Safiya radiallahu anha. She wanted to climb on top of the camel. You know what our master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did? He kept his knee in such a way that she could use his blessed thigh to help her climb on top of the camel. She used his blessed thigh, if he kept his thigh like this, to climb on top of the camel. She used his thigh to climb on top of the camel. Not open the car door, but give your leg for your wife to climb on top of the camel. Today, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, you know what they say, if a man opens the door for his wife, you know what they say? They say either the car is new or the wife is new. They say either the car is new or else the wife is new if you open the door for your wives. So my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, many instances from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on how his treatment to his wives were the best. Aisha radiallahu anha narrates Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The narration goes along the lines of these words. Once some Abyssinian slaves were having a spot in the masjid. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked his beloved wife Aisha radiallahu anha if she wanted to view them playing. She says yes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stands by the window or the door. She comes from behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and starts viewing the spot. And the narration goes to the word, goes along the words, along the lines of these words, so much to the extent, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, that she placed her cheek against the cheek of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She placed her cheek against the cheek of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she was watching the sport. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam waited for some time and then he asks Aisha radiallahu anha, Ya Aisha, is it enough? She says, no Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued to be or remain in that position with her placing her cheek on the cheek of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until Aisha radiallahu anha had enough of watching that sport. We know of the story where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raced with Aisha radiallahu anha. The first time Aisha radiallahu anha won the race and once again Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raced her after some time and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam won the race. All of these things my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam highlight that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to spend quality time with his spouses. He used to be the, he was the best husband. And finally, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, from, it is part of being a gentleman, and I say this in all of my nikah lectures, wherever I go, because it is from the sunnah of our master, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that is to use sweet expressions. To use sweet expressions. See, especially, perhaps if it is not in Colombo, maybe in the outskirts of Colombo, the husbands and the wives, the two spouses, they address one another using pronouns. They use pronouns. In the Tamil language perhaps, avan, avar, or aval, ival. This is how they address one another. This is how they address one another. Look at our master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He addresses his beloved wife Aisha radiallahu anha as Ya Humaira. Now who is Humaira? Humaira is not her name. Aisha 
radiallahu anha. That's her name. So why is he addressing her, Ya Humaira? It was a pet nickname that he used to call her. Ya Humaira, O rosy cheeked one. O rosy cheeked one. Our master, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to address his wife as Ya Humaira. So what is stopping us from addressing our wives using sweet expressions? Honey, sweetheart, cupcake, sugar, darling. Why can't we use sweet expressions? We're following our master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The other day I was reading a post as we are not supposed to call our wives using sweet expressions. Because if we say honey, sugar, cupcake, sweet cake, we stand the chance of getting diabetes. So rather call them karapincha, go to call her bitter things. Allah save us all. So having said that, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, it is of utmost importance that we follow our master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We adopt his life as our lives, for it is through that we will attain success in this world as the, and the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the nikah that is about to take place in a few minutes. And may he fill the hearts of those two spouses with love. May he bless them with beautiful children who will be obedient and who will be a coolness to their eyes. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins and may He accept all of our good deeds and may He unite us in the gardens of Jannah just as how He united us today.